this video, we'll be talking about chronic inflammation. In a previous video, we have talked about acute inflammation. And now let's see what is chronic inflammation. So chronic inflammation is a response which has a prolonged duration in terms of weeks or months. And in this time course, there is inflammation, tissue injury, and also attempt to repair the tissue. So how does chronic inflammation starts? There might be a predisposition of a acute inflammation, or it might not be preceded by acute inflammation altogether. It might begin insidiously and there could be low grade inflammation, which eventually augments over time. Now, the big difference between chronic and acute inflammation is the timing. The acute inflammation is kind of like short term inflammation. Whereas the chronic inflammation is prolonged and long term inflammation. It has long consequences that we would appreciate in this video. So what are the causes of chronic inflammation? One of the biggest cause is persistent infection, like a persistent tuberculosis infection, which is a granulomatous infection as well. I have a different videos on granulomatous inflection, inf infection. You can quickly go to the I button and watch that video. Now there could be also prolonged H. pylori infection, which might lead to cancer. There could be autoimmune disorders such as rheumatoid arthritis. A person who is living with rheumatoid arthritis is having inflammation for kind of long time period, for example, years of inflammation. And that has long term consequences in terms of health. There could be prolonged exposure of a toxic substances. Imagine a laborer working in kind of like a factory who is getting exposed to silica on a daily basis. And it's a chronic exposure. That means it's happening for a long time over a period of time in, it, in his lifetime. So in that case, it would lead to a prolonged chronic inflammation. Now, one of the biggest distinguishing feature between chronic and uh, short term acute inflammation is the cell types. So in the left side, you can see a nail has pricked in our skin and it has attracted a lot of neutrophils because the nail had a lot of uh, bacteria along with it. So neutrophils are one of the key cell type associated with the ac acute inflammation. Also in acute inflammation, there is vascular changes, edema, and it has to be remembered predominantly there is neutrophilic infiltration in the tissue site. Whereas the infiltration of mononuclear cells is a distinguishing feature in case of chronic inflammation. Macrophages, plasma cells, these are the key cell types that takes part in chronic inflammation. And it can be seen in histological sections as well. Here one can see that in the acute inflammation, the major infiltrates are actually polymorphonuclear cells such as neutrophil, whereas in the chronic inflammation, it is macrophages. So one thing is clear macrophages or mononuclear cells are kind of the key determinant of the chronic inflammation. But what are their roles? What role do they play in terms of developing chronic inflammation? Let's try to understand that. So we'll begin with the birth. Here is hematopoietic pluripotent stem cell which give rise to myeloid progenitors. Eventually it forms um, monoblast. Monoblasts blast get differentiated into monocyte. Monocyte, when enters in the tissue space, they become macrophages. And these macrophages are normally diffusely scattered in uh, different connective tissues. Also, they could be found in different organs. For example, in liver, they are known as Kuffer cells. In uh, spleen, they are known as sinus histocytes. In brain, they are known as microglia. And each of them has role in inflammation. So macrophages are of two types, the M1 macrophage, M2 macrophage. As you can see, M1 macrophage is highly associated in the context of chronic inflammation. M1 macrophage does many things. One of that is basically secretion of reactive oxygen species, reactive nitrogen species and lysosomal enzyme. All of that can actually kill the pathogen. So here you can see the reactive um, macrophage has engulfed the pathogen, which is a bacteria in this case. 
and it undergoes a process called respiratory burst which is basically killing the pathogen with the help of reactive oxygen species. I have a different video on respiratory burst. This strategy is used by both macrophages and neutrophils by the way. Anyway, there are lysosomal mediated degradation of these bacteria as well. Moreover, these macro M1 macrophages secretes cytokines and chemokines which can attract other immune cell types to the site of infection. In a moment, we'll talk about more of these cytokines and chemokines. Let's talk about M2 macrophages. Their actions are kind of like opposite to M1 macrophages. They secrete cytokines, but these are anti-inflammatory in nature like IL-10, TGF-beta. Also, TGF-beta has the capability of doing tissue repair and fibrosis. So there are two pathways of macrophage activation, classical and the alternative. Generally, the M1 macrophages are the key players underlying the chronic inflammation. M1 macrophages can activate naive T cell and these activated T cells can get further influenced by the M1 macrophages by several polarizing cytokines such as IL-12, IL-33, IL-6, all of them are actually inflammatory. So they finally induce the fate of the activated T cell into Th1 or Th17 sublineages. Both of them are potent drivers of inflammation. Now this works like a vicious cycle and the loop is closed by the Th1 subtype of T cell which secretes several uh, cytokines. But before that let me tell you that there are uh, other chemokines which can attract dendritic cells, macrophages and neutrophils to the site of infection and thereby increasing the extent of inflammation as well. So Th1 closed the loop of these a vicious cycle by secreting interferon gamma. Interferon gamma actually helps, the, helps in the M1 macrophage differentiation. So overall M1 macrophage and Th uh, inflammatory subpopulations work hand in hand to augment the inflammatory response in chronic inflammation. Now there are other players such as antibody producing plasma cells which can produce antibodies specific to a uh, antigen in the inflammatory site or it can produce an uh, antibodies against basically altered tissue components. So more, of, more or less plasma cells act by producing antibodies and antibodies can do many stuff um, like opsonization and many other things. Anyway, there are neutrophils and eosinophils which are not major player in these chronic inflammation but they can also be found in the site of uh, chronic inflammation as well. But the major player as we talked about are M1 macrophages, Th1 and Th17 subtype of T cells. Now what are the outcomes of chronic inflammation? The outcomes is tissue scarring and sometimes neoplastic transformation. Let me give you an example. So there are uh, H. pylori infection that lead to gastric ulceration or duodenal ulcers. Now if H. pylori infection is untreated and persists for a long term, then H. pylori infection can lead to gastric adenocarcinoma, which is detrimental. So thereby, we understand what are the molecular and cellular players underlying chronic inflammation. So I hope this video was useful. Get notes and flashcards in our website, Facebook page or in Instagram. See you in next video. Please support our channel using Super thanks. Your support is really important for us to make high quality contents. Your small contribution is our motivation. See you in next video.